to I give up at like the first chance. Do you ever dream of sandbags? So that future generations Good. could see how annoying Andrew is. They sucked his brains out. The the impulse to say fuck you to Josh. Because you know this whole thing was just organized to stroke egos. Come to you live from New York. All right, so we are ready for game two on Lagra. Uh, Ian is currently up 1-0 against Tyler. Uh, just heartbreaking to watch Tyler throw that game away. I mean, he really, he really could have had it, you know. But that's what separates the good players from the great. Mm. All right, who should I follow this time? Uh, <laughs> switch it up. I think I'll maybe stick with Ian for the beginning, and then uh, just go back and forth to Tyler. Looks like Ian's graphics have improved dramatically, so it's not as bad to watch yeah. him anymore. Well, it's much needed. I that think... last broadcast on Simwa was watching. Um, I, I wouldn't go as far as to call them N64 graphics, but they were approaching that level. Oh, I I would call them N64 graphics. Well, sure. I I was like, trying to be a little. I would nice, be impressed but... with them circa 1998 for sure. <laughs> That's the beauty of this game, though. You know, ten years old now, and uh, when it came out, it looked good. And even now, ten years later, it still looks really good. It does. It absolutely looks good. I mean, I've never had a moment of being dissatisfied with the uh, with the graphics in this game. Other than uh, hot take alert: I think the graphics in this one are better than the ones in Company of Heroes 2. Ooh, shots fired. Of course, I have a very low opinion Josh, of that game more generally, so... Josh, do you just hate Russians? Is that what it is? It is. Well, as a, as a both a freedom-loving uh, American patriot and, in this game, uh, half the time a Nazi, I just despise Russians and communism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do you think that uh, the fascists and the Western democracy should band together and fight against communism? Hey, Even though it's like winter of 1944, it's entirely illogical. Look, we had our chance, you know, 72 years ago, and we threw it away. You know, we just had to move on from that. Well, November 8th, you can vote a fascist into office if you want to. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse man. me, November 28th. Excuse me. November 35th, according to Alec Baldwin. Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not good that we're recording this, because... Uh, Assuming said fascist gets elected, he'll have concrete evidence of our uh, civil on, civil dissent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, self censure is pretty important. Uh, so it's onto the game. Speaking of actual fascists, um, looks like Ian's going for heavy Panzer Grenadier start. He's got three PG squads out. They're gonna run straight at these riflemen in the center. Now. The Panzer Elite versus America matchup is an interesting one because America can almost never win in a straight up fight against Panzer Grenadiers, especially in a case like this where they're outnumbered uh, two squads to one. Um, you almost just have to stall around the map and cap where you can and then like hold on for like yeah. M8. Especially if the PE player is uh, bunching up uh, his infantry squad, just like Ian's doing. I mean, we're seeing him use two in the same spot. Um, it's just devastating rifle use between those guys, so mm -hmm. there's not too much you can do as an American in the early game other than hold them off until the mid game. Exactly. Uh, the best you can hope for is to sort of get one isolated and maybe gang up on him with a rifleman and an engineer, and maybe you can take him out then. But in a case like this, where it's two rifle squads against three Panzer Grenadiers in green cover, there I mean, there's just no way. Yeah. Oh, he's in the slow. We saw there. We saw there that uh, Tyler's infantry squads. One of them even got suppressed by the uh, bolt-action rifle fire from the Panthers. <laughs> you know you're in bad shape when the uh, <laughs> bolt-action rifles are suppressing you. There's enough of them. Yeah, I guess exactly. It, I guess it just takes nine of them to do it. <laughs> Uh, Tyler just lost his ninja squad there. I think I'm actually Three. behind you. E yeah, Ian's broadcast is definitely behind. Oh wait, no, Tyler's is behind. I don't know. Whatever, someone's behind. 
someone's born. Okay, well. That's fine. Nothing we can do about that. Too many hot takes. Henry, tell me about the future. What is the future like? Burn them out. Um, the future is wonderful. I mean, uh, actually, I, I'm looking at the two broadcasts and they seem up for me. Hmm. Um, Maybe it's looking at the wrong the, issue. Uh, we have a female president in the future. The Democrats won the Senate. Um, the fascists have been pushed out. Breitbart News has been outlawed. The future looks bright. Um... We may we may be eating our words here in a couple of weeks, um, because as Nate Silver says, there's always a possibility for a massive polling error. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, but a, a polling error on the scale of six to eight points would be unprecedented in modern history. Well, Henry, you know one Brexit polling error is three to four points. And we're looking at a two times Brexit error, which is just uh, that's just crazy. I mean, Dewey defeats Trump was within sort of what, the 5% range, but back then they didn't really do a whole lot of extensive polling, so it's not exactly a fair standard to apply. I don't know, Henry. Um, I mean, as we all know, the election is horribly rigged, um, assuming uh, Trump well, loses. That's true. I, I was forgetting that. Uh, well, there's that, so the polling is going to naturally reflect oh. the rigging. Oh, is that PG going to go oh. down? Oh, there's bars. There's bars. That's going to help him out. Yeah, his bars just popped. But Ian's going to get this incendiary grenade in here, which doesn't do a lot of damage on impact, but it's Tyler doesn't notice it, it's gonna burn this rock up, which it's doing right now. It just killed two of them. Which it does. It got a lot of kills that thing made. The kills that are the escalating up. Fourth! Fence. You can see yeah, the XP popping. Fifth! Oh my god, that killed killed five yeah. Rathman with just one grenade. It traveled right up the fence. And this is the thing, Tyler should know that these bars are good against uh, units uh, up close. They're not gonna win at range in green cover, it's just not gonna happen. We're actually seeing a late increased squad size from uh, Ian as well. Ian's just gone tank destroyer, by the way. Interesting. Yes, so he's thinking that Tyler is probably thinking that he needs uh, vehicles of some sort. It's interesting though, because I don't think Tyler, he doesn't have a supply depot yet, and uh, Ian sees that he, Tyler has bars, and Ian has better map control, so he should know that there's not a fuel advantage Tyler has to get bars and an M8, so, I mean, I think going an infantry focus is what he wants to do, which he largely has with a lot of Panzer Grenadiers and getting the increased squad size. Tyler building the triage center right there in his days. Yeah, I'm definitely behind you. Let me refresh. Hope everyone at home enjoys these few seconds of loading screen. There we go. No, please, I enjoy the loading screen. Ian's trying to push up there a little bit, but now he's got uh, two infantry squads and a third one coming up. Yeah, he's gonna have to protect his cutoff outside his main base, otherwise he's gonna lose that income on the right side he's got captured. Huge push from Tyler coming down, three rocket squads. Mm -hmm. It looks like Tyler's actually gonna build a weapon support center. Or no, he's against the lighter, okay. He was hovering over weapon support centers. Hands are gonna do squad down. Good kill. And this is where you see the power of uh, barred riflemen in groups. Oh, the mine though. The mine gets a couple kills and it pins that uh, squad. Looks like Ian's learned uh, from the best. Quick shout out to Parker, our uh, resident Operation Fidelio mine expert. Slash troll. Slash troll. Uh, Ian does have a uh, scout car up with this song. He likes the scout cars. Um, I think he likes to get the extra resource income. Because you can lock down territories with them. I just don't know if they're worth the manpower investment to do that. I mean, that's the same reason I dislike observation posts. But he did just wipe out a right. rifleman squad. And it dropped two yep. bars. Oh, no. Uh, Tyler's got a, uh, a motor going up right now. Though. It's definitely what he needs. Yeah, he, 
but, I think uh, he thought about picking up the two bars and then decided that the uh, low health for a uh, man right the squad was just too vulnerable, so he left one. Ian's getting the Panzer Elite Armored Car, which is devastating against infantry, but if Tyler gets a Greyhound, um, I mean, we saw this in my game one against Ian, the Greyhound can compete with the Armored Car head to head and win easily. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Especially with a little bit of infantry support. Absolutely. Although Tyler did just lose that one rifle squad and dropped both bars, which is really going to hurt him. Well, Tyler does control uh, two of the three PPs right now, and if you look at points wise, you know it's it's, it's pretty uh, pretty even. Four forty three to four. Is that sixty four? I see now. Uh, four sixty three to four forty three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very even in terms of VPs. Um, I just think Ian has more resource control, and you know, in the long run, it's gonna yeah. pay off for him. I think he has enough to get a second we'll what, armored car. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what Tyler does with this, uh, this inmate that's coming out right now. And he gets armored skirts and the 50 cal. Definitely a good choice. You, you absolutely need the skirts. Um, I think it doubles the health of the M8. And then um, the 50 cal is going to help him out a lot against his massive panzer grenadiers. Yep. And Ian's armored car is racing up that road to the center. And here's the M8 making its appearance as well. The M8 manages to kill, I believe, what? Is that Schwimmwagen? I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, the Schwimmwagen. Yep, the M8 takes it out in one shot. Tyler's definitely doing a better job managing the VP. He's just an engineer to capture the center one. In the middle of this fight. Yep. He at least whites it, so it's neutral. Um, if Tyler can send this M8 up, be more aggressive with it against this armored car, he can just take it out, no problem. I don't know if he knows that it's can really beat it though. The enemy is weakening even now. Taking Did he just lose a he rifle squad? The lost infantry squad and an engineer squad. Totally needlessly. He, he absolutely did not need to lose those. Yep. And that's that's the other key to this game. So losing squads will lose you the game. It's so much more absolutely. expensive to build a squad than it is to reinforce it. He does have a second armored car coming out. Um, which he's also double upgrading, so that's a decent anti-infantry and scout car uh, counter. But he might just be lacking the infantry to follow up on any advantage he gets. I mean, how many infantry squads does he have right now? He lost two. Man. I think he only built three riflemen, so I think he just has one rifle. I see. Yeah, he's only got one rifle squad and these two M8s, and that's all he's got. I think the hard work in the center. It's, it's almost sort of, a, in a way, a repeat of. Um, the first game because he lost a bunch of infantry there too and he had a lot of vehicles that were devastating. I just hope he learned his lesson. He can actually capitalize. He's actually holding these inmates back, which I don't think is a good idea. He needs to rush up and push the in off the field so he can get some capping. He does have a second rifleman squad that's coming out of the base right now. Here it is, makes his appearance in the field. Ian's and building he is queuing up third. He's building a tank hunter and Tyler's gonna get captured. Okay, now he's pushing up with Robert Card. But once again, this is the same problem as earlier. He needs to send both of them. He's got a second one coming down now, he just needs to group them together. Yeah, and see just the one armored car pushed off Ian from that whole side of the map. Yeah, and two could have taken out one of those vehicles if they broke his fire. Absolutely. Reinforcements are readying now. Tyler just went off map instead of rangers. How do we feel about that? I don't agree with that choice. He doesn't choice. have the munitions. Yeah, he doesn't have the munitions for, for too much off map usage. He definitely knows that Ian's got a lot of vehicles out right now. Yeah, the off map's not a really good idea. Especially in this case because there's any munitions. And then also because Panzer Elite is so mobile it's hard to catch anything with it. Mm. And he needs those munitions for sticky bombs and for mines, and if he had rangers, he could get Thompsons on them, which would help them just shred the Panzergrenadiers. Yep. 
He does have another uh, infantry squad coming out, so he's managed to re-up them, but really at significant manpower cost. And he's going for his first supply here. But, uh, yeah, that's a big sunk cost. What did he just kill with his Ooh. Did this give a scout car? I think that was a scout car, yeah. Again, he's just in his rival squad. Okay, there's the gray out. But Ian does have a martyr now. Which you can... Oh, he's gonna lose his rival squad again. Like, for no reason. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was just a headlong attack right into a... a two stationary... Uh, he's backed up by armor. He's holding these greyhounds. Back. Okay, now they're going in. They, you cannot sit back with these units. You have to go in. And look, and he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's microwaving his greyhound around this martyr, which can easily yeah. kill it. Yep. Yeah, the martyr turns very slowly, and it actually has fairly weak armor. Yeah, it's almost killed. Main gun down. Maybe one or two hits. He's dead. Oh, the martyr's main gun is down. He got it. The headster's trying to get some shots off. And the Martyr is down. He, he needs to get that gray out of here, though. The Hetzer's gonna kill it. Oh, what is yeah. he doing? Oh, he's gonna drive around the back. Oh, he's gonna get the armored car. He got it. He needs to get that gray out of here, though. It's got Vet 2. It's a valuable unit. Yep. Wow. Oh, what is he doing? Kill. Oh, the Hetzer misses at point blank range. What is Tyler doing? He's not moving that armored car out of there. Oh my god, his map's all screwed up. Yeah, no. He just, oh god. I gotta send oh him a god, message. He's stuck on camera controls. Get it back. Double backspace. Yeah, I'm telling him. <laughs> Hopefully he sees it. I think he fixed it. I think he figured it out. Mm. That was unfortunate timing, though. Uh, I, w I wonder if that cost him. I wonder if, you know. I think at this point. Um, Tyler needs to get an AT gun. He has the motor pool, so he can absolutely build one. He's done a great job. He killed the well, martyr and the armored car and the scout car. Yeah, well, he's building a second, uh, well, rather a third M8. Yeah, I'd, I'd really rather see a, 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 an anti tank gun come out instead. Yeah, the M8s are certainly a good option. He had two of them, and they were effective, um, but they're only good if you're aggressive, which he noticed. Right. I just hope he continues to use them that way. He does have a tank depot coming up, so Ooh. maybe he's thinking that he's going to counter the Hetzer with uh, something from tank depot instead of the AT gun. Not a bad idea. What kind of income does he have in terms of fuel? He's at plus 32 for fuel, um, and he's only at 20 right now. Yeah, it's a little bit away from really getting being able to get some effective tank units out. Yeah, I was just curious um, because Ian only has plus ten and he's sitting on fifteen, Ooh. so he doesn't have a lot either. Yeah. So Tyler's winning the resource war right now. He just needs to make sure he holds on to it, and uh, he doesn't actually have any units in the center to hold off Ian's Panzer Grenadiers, are just yeah. capping by themselves. He's backed off completely from the map. He doesn't have any units outside of his base. So he's allowing Ian right now to, to go out and cap at will. Yep, and that's just another thing about this game. I mean, even if you are on the back foot and you uh, need to sort of consolidate your position, you always want to have any full-strength squads you have out, just at least out to on the perimeter, just to push away anything, to slow people down so you don't get pushed all the way up the map like he is right now. Especially as Americans, because they've got that uh, that fast capping power. They cap at 1.5 as the uh, as other units do. So, especially getting them on the edge of the map where Ian's not looking, you know, you can take back that near munitions, for example. Ian doesn't have anything over there. Um, but as it is, he's got an infantry yeah, unit in the half track right now that's sitting doing nothing. Yeah, I don't know what he's waiting for. And now Ian's just taking his cut off, and Tyler's just gonna watch him do it. Oh, okay, now he's sending an M8 out. He's going Two forward. M8. Yeah, I, I know the instinct in this game a lot of the times is to wait till you have your big army and then make one big attack, which certainly is viable and a good thing to do, but you also have to be constantly putting pressure on. You can't let your enemy just have the map and do whatever they want with it. Yeah, these M8s, again, they're just hanging back, taking pot shots, but they need to be up close. Yeah, 
have we seen an anti-tank gun coming out of Tyler or anything out of the uh, tank depot yet? He's got something coming out of the tank depot, and this is what it is. I think it is a Hellcat. It is a Hellcat. So that could help him out. He's, uh, he, he's upgunning it with machine gun, too. He needs to back his Greyhound out, though. It's just going to kill by these Hetzer. He can't stand up to it. Yeah, Hellcat's coming out fast. It's going to be near Hetzer. He's aggressive with it, and he gets around the behind of him. The Hetzers don't have a turret, so he can just micro away. But no, he's just gonna hang back with it. I... He cannot win in a stand-up fight. The whole point is to circle around the back. Yeah, look at it. It's only down to about 20% health now at best. Oh, it's basically dead. Ian's not even looking at it. He's just letting the Hetzers shoot it. He's, just, he's not even watching it. And that Greyhound's gonna die too, it's just sitting there not doing anything. And the heads are shooting at it, there it goes. I mean, you know, in RTSs people talk a lot about micro, which is certainly important. Um, it can win you games or get you out of sticky situations. But macro is just as important. Um, just sort of knowing more generally what's going on and having a plan and, you know, sticking to like some certain principles. And difference between strategy and tactics. That is exactly it. And, you know, losing units needlessly can often be a result of poor micro, but, you know, if you're losing units all the time when there's not a lot going on, that's, you know, that's. You just, it's hard to come back from something like that. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, Tyler's definitely not out of this game. Technically, he is winning by VPs right now. He's pushed back to his base, but uh, he's not out. Sure. I mean, we're almost we're seeing similar uh, to the last game. You know, Tyler has had all the right units he needs to win and to come out and push Ian off the field. He has all the right tech, you know, he had the resources, but he's just sitting in his base. He, he doesn't even really even have him trapped, he's just sort of willfully staying in his base. Right. Well, he does have an AT gun out now, and he's waiting for the 75 munitions needed to make a, uh, rather fuel to make a, uh, a 57, you know, the howitzer. Ah, uh, okay. The AT gets some good hits there. Yeah, that's exactly why you need he's the AT gun. He's fuel, but he's busy micro right now. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you want to win your fight and build the next unit you need at the same time, but right. it just takes practice. Yeah, but we see the power of the AT gun. It pushed Ian back a fair amount. And now, Tyler right, now he's got the howitzer building. Mm. This might be able to turn it around for him. If he can get that howitzer up, start laying in some good uh, artillery strikes in, and sort of preserve his units and continue to push out and not just sort of play passively, he can definitely get back into this. Absolutely. Ooh, rivals got annihilated. Ian, that's a very good push for Ian. Oh, it's on. Oh yeah, I thought it was annihilated. I just didn't see the icon anymore. Yeah, Ian's doing a great job of keeping Tyler bottled up. He's got his headsers. There, five is dropping its first shot right down the soft retreat path of those Panzer Grenadiers and see if we can get them before they walk away. Oh, what has Ian done with them? Are they sitting there still? I think so. Uh, there's no, I don't know, okay, yeah, there's nothing that where Tyler's targeted. He's moved away from there. The shells are all landing just north of that center DP. Yeah. Ian's actually so, got such a solid lock on the map, he's built a forward HQ. Yeah. Well, Tyler's tipped his hand. Uh, Ian knows that there's a a howitzer now, um, so he's going to try to be a little bit more mobile. But if he's got a forward HQ, um, that kind of would generally make you more stationary. It's a good micro you need to that. Uh, Tyler does also have a Ranger squad. Yeah. And he's upgunning them with the Thompsons. I just. I just don't know what Tyler's doing. There's a rival squad sitting on the southern fuel, not doing anything. He's been there for a few minutes, and Ian finally just noticed it. He's gonna go attack it right now, but...
Yeah, and Tyler turned his attention to it only when uh, Ian noticed it and started hitting him. And now, oh, an awful retreat path. Mm. I think they're wiped out. Yep, there oh, it is. And they dropped the bar. All of these guys. It's a free no, bar for awful. Ian. <laughs> mm. Ian just gave us a nice zoom in there. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for that. And at this point, Ian's actually getting the, the, the Funkwagen, uh, which I think just is like steals resources, which, I mean, I don't think he needs that. I don't, I don't think it's a particularly useful unit, but, I mean, at this point, you're so far ahead, you know, what's the difference? The attack from Tyler coming in. Oh, two tanks. Yeah, where is the AT gun? It was further up earlier. Has just had the main I, no, I don't. I think it was just the machine gun on top that was destroyed. Yeah, you're right. Which I've never seen before. It's kind of interesting, though. AT gun finally moved up, but I mean, it's too late now. Dropped yeah, another no, BAR. On in. I think that's four BARs Tyler's lost this game. Oh no. Ian just dropped his um, oh, vampire Ian. hat track in the north, and he's building Goliath out of it. Is he gonna try to send the Goliath? Well, is he gonna attack the Goliath? Base? Yep, that's what he's gonna do. And you know what he's gonna blow up? With 67 the Howitzer. Oh man. Yep, and he's looking around. He's trying to find the best way in. I don't, I don't know if Ian knows this, but the Goliath actually gets cloaked if it's in cover. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more curious to see what this Goliath's gonna do. I wish he would just look at that. Okay, so it's so he sees where the howitzer is. I think he can sneak in there. Oh, he's going after the. He can sneak in easy. Is he going after the AT gun, gun or? It's going for the AT gun. Tyler. There it is. No, Tyler sees it. Oh, but. <laughs> Next level asshole moves from. Yeah. That is dirty. That's dirty. I really thought he was gonna go for the howitzer, but I guess the howitzer hasn't been yeah, doing well, much. The game. howitzer shot is coming in right now. Only on the pants position. Kill two of them. Hit. I think it's trying to get that head. The more retreat. Should be coming out of Tyler's base. He's not gonna be able to stand up against two headsers head on. Especially with Panzer Grenadiers right there. And these Rangers aren't even uh, getting up in there. He's just gonna lose the Sherman. There it is. Second Goliath coming now from the <laughs> Vampire Hat Track. He's probably gonna send that one after the artillery piece, I guess. I didn't. I didn't realize that the vampire after I just spawned the line. That's how the building came from. I think Tyler's just desperate at this point. He just did a half track out to fight two heads. Or, oh, just to scout for the off map. <laughs> yeah, the off map almost kills one of them. One heads is extremely low health as a destroyed engine. If he could just get one ranger squad up there to sneeze at it, he would kill it. He's sending them up. Goliath just finished. And he fired up the Rangers. He wants to kill real fast. I don't know if Ian's going to notice it or care because he's got this Goliath he's worried about. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Are they actually going to. Oh, they're going to go away. They're not even going to finish the job. Yeah, they were too. Now, that's interesting. Ian actually just blew a hole in the um, hedgerow outside of Tyler's base to get into it to avoid the machine guns. Oh, huge howitzer shot. Kill the whole squad and the headsers down. I mean, artillery can certainly be devastating. It can help you win the game, but you gotta still have units to push out and attack with after the artillery yeah. softens them up. Yeah. 
Ian has 780 munitions. He's building another Goliath. They cost 125 yeah. munitions each, but it doesn't even hurt him. Because he has 70 and right in the face. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I've never seen uh, Goliaths being used in such great effect, because usually they have to travel quite a ways because they're built at bunkers. But. Right. Or they have to lie in wait. For a strategic moment to blow themselves up, but he is using the vampire hand tactic. Very great effect. Yeah, I think we can safely say that Ian is, uh, so far is a top contender for the asshole of the tournament award. Oh, uh, well, Ian's a coveted award. We'll have to see. Oh, here it comes, straight at the howitzer. And there it is. Well, it kills the squad, but it doesn't finish off the howitzer. But Ian's actually got two Panzer Grenadier squads and Panzer Strikes coming in to finish it off. There they are. I've that's actually fascinating. I've never seen anyone blow a hole inside of a hedgerow by the base just to get into the base. <laughs> yeah. With Goliaths especially. It's definitely definitely always something interesting going on in these games. <laughs> yeah. Very innovative. I don't know why he's sending his uh, hand strike squads around to the north. There's a machine gun covering that flank. I don't know what his thinking is. I mean, they're just going to get pinned down. They're going to th try to throw grenades like at it, but I don't think that's going to help. It seems kind of pointless when you can just charge straight in. It's not like the Vickers, right? Yeah, it's not like the Vickers where you can pull the guys inside. I mean, it's a building. I don't. I don't know why he's doing that, it's interesting. I wish he'd look at it, I'm curious to see if it's actually doing anything. Yeah, that was just totally needless. <laughs> it's like... I mean, like I said though, at this point he's winning handily, so it doesn't really matter. But... Yeah. And he's got another Goliath coming out as well. Uh, I'll put it this way, Ian, if you're gonna be an asshole, at least be optimal about your assholery. <laughs> Goliath, I wonder what his target's gonna be. He doesn't have anything juicy. Oh, he's gonna send it after the machine gun nest, which he could have just killed with the Panzer Shanks, but whatever. <laughs> oh no, poor Tyler, I feel so bad. Ugh. Well, major problems with Tyler seeking out. It's not easy to be at this point of the game and still playing without GGing. I mean, I really respect that. I, I, I'm just way too proud of him. Absolutely, I mean, it takes it takes balls. He actually still has a couple of points that Ian has a cap, so uh, good for him on that, so you're not being totally pushed off. Um, especially in the face of this massive assholery from Ian. I mean, this is unprecedented. <laughs> AT gun coming out there. Um, I wish Tyler, other than other than the earlier things we talked about that Tyler could have done to get back in this game, uh, I think it would have been better for him at this point to just lay mines all over his own base. Uh, just that way when Ian comes in, he would just sort of finish him off in one final... What about sandbags? Well, I mean, sandbags are a pro maneuver. I mean, it's left only to the, the experts. <laughs> All right, uh, about 10 seconds left in this game. Give me a hot take. Hot takes. Hot take. I'm I'm very proud of both these guys. I mean, they both played play very well. And, uh, I mean, this game especially was 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 a much closer match than the score show. And, uh, it was a very good watch and uh, deep respect for both players. There's the win. Whew. Well done from Ian on uh, two victories. So he's not out of this tournament yet. He's uh, going to advance mm. the next round of the loser's bracket, and he's going to fight you.